Hickok 45, and guess what? I'm in kind of a busily color case hardened frame of mine today. So let's just shoot some 45 Colt at that paper. Oh man, look at that. What a what a marksman. I hit the paper. Wow. Wonder if I hit a pot, smoke a little pot early. Whoa, where was the smoke? There's the smoke. Now watch the recoil. Watch carefully now. When it's empty, there's no recoil. Just thought maybe some of you weren't aware of that. Oh yeah, color case hardened frame. Bisley Grip. Ruger Super Blackhawk. That's what it is. It's, I think, one of 500. And it's, uh, you know, the Turnbull uh, color case hardening. It's a Talo exclusive or Tallow exclusive. Maybe both. I think it's Talo. But it's an exclusive, you know, they're a distributor and, and uh, they made, I believe, 500 of these. So kind of interesting looking Ruger, isn't it? Super Blackhawk. Uh, you know, I much prefer the, the Colt single action and the looks of the Colt single action, the history, historical look and authenticity and all of that. But uh, this is a pretty nice Ruger. Uh, you know, it's, it's, got a, it's got a nice look about it. You know, for one thing, look at the barrel. You don't have the read the instruction manual right there. And, you know, it, it's under here. It's more subtle and everything. But they've done a pretty good job on that. Let's go over here and unload it. Talking to me. Now, you notice the serial number on this thing, too. Uh, yeah, I just noticed that before the video because it, there's supposed to be 500 of these made. Look at the serial number. It's 500. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. If I were going to buy one, maybe I would define this one a little bit more attractive. You know, some people don't get all caught up in serial numbers and everything, but it's interesting to have uh, an interesting uh, serial number. You know, like number one or, you know, I don't know, number 300 or, or whatever. Nice round number. Let's unload it now. This is a Ruger. Okay. You got the transfer bar. If you don't know what that is, look at the video I did on transfer bars and hammer blocks and all that recently. You know what, I thought I'd break tradition here and load six. You notice I shot six. And I, I typically load five, even with these modern uh, transfer bar versions, just so I stay in that habit. You know, and uh, I did cowboy action shooting a long time and, and you load five, no matter what kind of firearm you have. And, uh, but you know, I think with this transfer bar, you see there, and we've demonstrated that before, uh, it's safe to load six. I think I'm just going to load six today. How's that? Just for emphasis, to remind you, if it's a Ruger, a newer Ruger, well, I guess all Rugers, well, unless it's made before like around 1974 or something like that, it's going to have the transfer bar where you can load six. And you know, you can look at it, okay? Uh, so that's, that's what we've got, the color case hardened Bisley model. And it is an interesting looking gun. You don't see color case hardening that nice. On a Ruger, very often do you. It's very close to this Colt. This is a, a new, fairly new, you know, this is the Davy Colt, the uh, third generation Colt. Uh, check out that video if you haven't seen it, three generations of Colt. And, uh, you know, the color case yeah, looks very similar, doesn't it? And I'll tell you what, if, if you've been around firearms very long, you see some of the, uh, and then not to pick on the, the Italian imports, but some of the color case hardening you see, I'm not sure it's really color case hardening on some of the import firearms and maybe some even made here. It looks like somebody painted it on. I mean, it'd been better off if they just blew the thing. Okay. So, but this, this is pretty nice. It really is. So, and of course we're going to shoot some federal ammo here. Uh, 45 Colt. I've got a couple versions of it. I've got some, my hand loads I might shoot some big 300 grain bullets. Uh, yeah, man, got some Oregon Trail bullets there I've loaded up. These are loaded mainly for my Marlin rifle because they're, uh, they're pretty, pretty, pretty stiff loads, but it's okay to shoot those in a Ruger. I wouldn't shoot those in my Colt. They probably wouldn't blow it up, <laughs> but, uh, you know, they're more geared for a Ruger, which is a stronger, you know, cylinder and stronger action. Uh, it's not because Colt's too stupid to make a stronger gun if they wanted to, I guess. It's just uh, for an authentic Colt, I mean, there are certain dimensions, and that's just the way they're made. Made for black powder originally, and, uh, you know, any moderate loads, of course, but you, you don't want to push it. If you want a Magnum 45 Colt, you want to try to Magnumize a 45 Colt round, uh, which I don't really advise, just go ahead and 44 Magnum. 
454, there's a lot of really hot uh, you know, cartridges out there. You don't have to try to magnemize a, a cartridge that really wasn't meant to be magnemized, okay? But these are a little warmer. You know, for the Marlin, you can literally do that. And uh, they're fine for this. I've shot a couple of them in there. I may shoot a couple of them today. All right, so did I tell you too much there in a hurry? And what am I forgetting? Oh, yeah, if you're not, what else do I need to tell you? I'll tell you a little bit about this as I shoot it. Uh, like I say, one of 500, it's the uh, Turnbull Special. If you're not familiar with Doug Turnbull, he is, eh, what is he? He's the guru, I guess, of color case hardening, and uh, I guess has been for a long time. And I see uh, their work at the NRA meetings and SHOT Show, and they can take anything <laughs> in, in color case. I think I've seen them uh, do AR-15s and you know everything else. I could take him that piece of anvil over there, a railroad track, and and he could uh, make it look like that. Uh, so they're, they're masters at that. They do it the, the old fashioned way, I think, which is you know heating a certain way with what, charcoal or something. So they know how to do it properly and like it was done in the old days. And as I say, some of the Italians apparently don't know or they don't take the time. You know, I think it's a fairly expensive process to do it correctly. You know, it, it really is. And you know, originally I think it was to harden the frame. Imagine that, color case hardening. And uh, in the old days, and getting this blotchy look was just kind of a side effect I've read. You know, it wasn't because I think, correct me if I'm wrong, some of you, uh, you scientists and uh, you know, historians out there, it wasn't because they thought, well, let's see if we can get a frame to look like that. What could we do to get a frame to look like that? They were actually trying you know, to harden the frame because that's the key part of the firearm, you know, where you want to be able to withstand the pressure and have hardened steel and all that. And uh, the blotchiness was kind of a side effect of that. And of course, we, I guess they could have covered it up somehow or nickel plated it or sanded it down if they had wanted to. But we have come to like that, haven't we? Uh, it's still, I like nickel single actions okay. Got a couple of them, uh, but I still prefer this configuration. You know, the blue and the color case hardening is my favorite. I think probably most people. And it's nice to have a firearm that, that has a really good job done on it. I'd just soon not have color case hardening at all if it's not done well. That's just me. I'm a bit of a snob, I guess. Oh, I was going to load up and shoot. Let's see. Why don't we load? Uh, you know what? Let's load some of these since they're lead. We'll shoot those early on. Some of these, these 300 grain 45 Colts. Okay, I load those in nickel cases. I haven't loaded them for a long time, but uh, that differentiates it. Plus, I can tell by the look of the bullet, and I write on the box what they are. But uh, so they are very, very different. I'm not going to accidentally put put them in a Colt. You know, they, I, I loaded them basically for my Marlin. Okay, so now these are going to have some punch. You'll notice uh, throughout the video, if you're if you're watching the video, if you watch this video, that uh, there'll be a little more recoil with these. Let's, I'm going to shoot that two liter right there because it's gotten kind of weird. I don't know if it leaked out or what. It might not blow up like it ought to. You notice it's kind of collapsed. Ooh, yeah, it just wasn't quite right. Of course, that took it out. These ought to smoke a pot, 300 grains of lead. <laughs> Look at that smoke. I love it. Let's, uh, what else needs to be shot? Cowboy, let's hit you with 300 grains. Boom. Yeah, it rocks him. Rocks this gun. Yeah. <laughs> let's try that Kentucky 2 liter, too, while we're at it. Oh, yeah, took care of that. Now, I'm not used to sitting shooting six, so let's try that green 2 liter. No, let's try one of those limbs on the tree, see if it knocks it around. <laughs> I believe it did at lightning speed, didn't it? That was six, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm never mistaken, am I? Yep, that was six. Every one of them there primers has a little dent in it. And that tells me that two liter thinks he's getting away. Guess what? He's not. Lying down on the ground, playing dead, doesn't save you around the, the, the Hickok 45 range. So yeah, let's just let it try those. And, and yeah, they kick a little more. Uh, but uh, just fine, just fine. And that's one of the claims to fame with the Ruger. They're well built. They are. I've been shooting this and kind of enjoying it. Even though, like I said, I'm, I'm a snob about single actions. I'll admit, I really like the Colt single action. And, uh, 
you know, when you start putting adjustable sights on a single action, to me, it, it takes it out of that, that realm of a historical, you know, like the Colt or clone. It turns it into a modern uh, hunting handgun, basically, for me. I don't want adjustable sights. You know, you know, Colt had a new, uh, what do they call it, the new new model, or new, new model, I guess it was. They make one, but that thing wasn't made, I think, until, uh, well, help me out there. I should know, shouldn't I, being a an expert on cold single actions but it was in the 20th century sometime they made that with adjustable sights like this one it wasn't like historical from the 1870s or 80s or anything like that and it and to me it's a bit of an abomination when i see it i'm sorry i, I just i just like the old traditional firearm so my point there partly is even though this one has the adjustable sights I just kind of a nice gun. I, you know, I, I don't find it as objectionable. Maybe uh, less objectionable than a Colt with, with adjustable sights because it's okay on a Ruger. Most of them probably have adjustable sights, you know, unless it's a Vaquero. Uh, you know, I had a 44 Magnum. In fact, my first 44 Magnum was the Ruger Super Blackhawk. And I, I've had the, the 45, uh, the Blackhawk, and I don't know, in a Ruger. It's kind of a replica of the old Colt single action, but then again, it's really not. So it, it doesn't bother me as much. So I'm kind of picky, aren't I? Yeah. So anyway, uh, that's that. Now, the Bisley grip, you notice it's longer. It's a, it's a long grip. It's a different, kind of a different contour. And Colt made those, of course, originally. Uh, I think it was in 18, about 1894, if I got the date right. And they made those up until around 1915 with the Bisley grip. All right, and uh, it it comes from a, a little town in, in England called Bisley, where they they like that grip. I don't know if they they modified some Colts and put that grip on them or something like that. And there was a lot of competitions there, and kind of like Creedmoor, you know, in Long Island. So a lot of different things grew out of there, and which happens if a lot of people are doing some specific type of competition. You know how it is, whether it's USPSA or anything. People figure out modifications that make make them able to shoot faster and more accurately and all that kind of thing and people uh that sort of took off there and, and colts was you know making it uh that grip that long grip supposedly gave them more more to hang on to and kind of rapid fire if you're shooting a lot of rounds you can hang on to it it doesn't roll up as much you can get up higher on it i think maybe and also the hammer notice the difference in the hammer now this is what they just call the plow grip now kind of ignore those beautiful stag grips you know we're looking at the shape of the grips here now this one's longer uh, if they had the same you know, type of grip material on them, it'd be easier to see that, I guess. But this one, kind of, you're drawn to this one, aren't you? Because it's so beautiful. But you notice the difference in the length and the shape. They call this the plow handle grip, and this is the Bisley grip. And notice the hammer, too, though, is different. Because the grip was bigger, longer, it, it, they also wanted to make the hammer easier to get to. Now, for me, it's not a problem, of course. It's almost too easy to get to, but it's uh, flatter. You know, the, the spur doesn't stick up in the air as much. Some people with small hands have a little bit of a trouble reaching up there and cocking these things. You know, I obviously don't, but uh, some people do. And with this one, you get a hold of that, and there's a hammer right there. I can grab it with my knuckle even on my thumb. You know, so, and it's wider, so that was considered easier. So that was one of the differences. I, th I think all the Bisley Grip Colts had that, okay? So it started out on the Colts, of course, because Colt was made for, you know, decades and decades and decades uh, almost a century uh, in some fashion, cat percussion and otherwise, before the Rugers came along around what, late 1940, 1950, or along in there somewhere. So this is kind of a copy of the Colt Bisley grip. Okay, actually I like this Bisley grip better than what is on the Colts. The Colts are a little thinner and I don't know, it just doesn't feel quite as good as, as the Ruger Bisley grip. And first, in fact, the first two firearms I bought to compete in cowboy action shooting, the first few matches I used some odds and ends, things I had, Schofield and different things. I bought a matched pair of Rugers uh, Vaqueros with the Bisley grips. Made sense to me because, you know, I have a big hand and I did fine with them. But I really came to decide I preferred the plow handle, even with my large hands. So go figure. But that's the Bisley grip and that's kind of where that came from. Okay. Uh, as Colts sold fewer and fewer as it moved into the 20th century, you know, everybody's into other firearms, instead of just cowboy guns, uh, 
sales you know slowed down and then the Bisley grip slowed down so they just quit making the Bisley grip model I think 1915 if I'm correct okay so a little history on that and the color case hardening uh, again Doug Turnbull if you've never heard of him he's he's the kind of considered the king in the farms world for for color case hardening uh, and he does other things modifications and all that too and again this is a Talo exclusive I'll shoot some of these uh, 500 of them, to the best of my knowledge. So it's kind of neat. It's like, I'm, I'm glad somebody, uh, one of you, recommended it. Okay, so you can jump in here in the convents and uh, pat yourself on the back and let everybody know you're the one who wrote me and said, said get one of these. Uh, some With some firearms, you don't have to twist my arm as much, do you? Okay, so there you go. I'm loading six today. I'm breaking tradition. Uh, to emphasize with that transfer bar system and everything, it's okay. You can't make it fire by hitting the hammer. Okay, if you've seen our video on should you load five or should you load six, I think it's called, we actually do that. I shouldn't tell you what we do in the video. I should make you watch it. So go watch it. Maybe I'll put a link uh, every now and then uh, to that. But we were hitting the hammer, not about like that, I think with a little handle of some sort. And it was going off. Okay, so... That's why it's just safer with this one to have, have six. Okay, let's shoot something. Oh man, well, let's, let's wake up Mr. Gong with this pretty gun. I did adjust the sights, uh, so it was nice to be able to do that. It was shooting a little high. But I've not shot it at the gong yet. I should be able to hold about the bottom, I think. Yep, all right. I think I see that hit, maybe I don't. All right, yeah, I have to hold, hold down on the bottom of it. Okay, feels good. Let me try that pig up there. All right. It's a good feeling. Let's try that uh, bison. Popped him, I think, but he didn't go down. Missed him, and he didn't go down. Click. Not enough powder in that one. All right. Doesn't take long to empty one of these, does it? Six rounds. Wow. Party gun. Uh, this thing sells, I think it's supposed to retail. The MSRP is around uh, something like 1100 or 11 something. I don't know. I think it sells for around 850 or 900. Uh, so whatever you can find it for. But uh, pretty pretty gun for what it is. I, I think I would be very tempted on, on this myself if I were interested in a, uh, a Blackhawk. Because uh, it's I don't know, it's just pretty nice. Uh, nice grips. Don't have all that writing all over it. Roll marks. Uh, it has the color case hardening, but it's really well done. So, so you know, again, let's see, as far as negatives, you know, well, you know, my biggest negative is it's just not, you know, a Colt single action or the or a clone of the Colt single action. That's my favorite configuration of this type of firearm. If I want a single action, that's my preference. And I guess I'm not even as interested in hunting. Now, a lot of people love these because they hunt with them and they want something to handle a stronger, you know, round and everything. So, you know, this makes sense. You don't want to get an old Colt or even a new Colt. If you're going to be firing uh, really hot ammo, this is exactly what you want. And, uh, you know, this type of firearm, a uh, Ruger Super Blackhawk or something like that. And there, there are other competition for this you know like the uh, the magnum research firearm freedom arms and there's others i guess that are they're made to withstand the, the modern pressures you know and everything uh and you might like the bisley grip if you're thinking about a single action you might want to pick one of these up sometime uh, whether it's the this particular model or not you know the color case hard and all that but because the, they make the bisley grip in their standard cult or uh you know ruger super blackhawks they make stainless and i don't know if they make them in blue anymore but See, you might pick one up sometime at a gun show and just see how it feels to you. And, and they do feel great. You'll probably really like it. Uh, that's how I was seduced by them. I picked them up and 
I even had some stag grips made for mine. Wow, you believe that? That was back when stag was easy to get and didn't cost an arm and a leg. And they were beautiful. Now, whoever has those things now, boy, the stag on those grips is worth more than the pistols. But, uh, but uh, you'll like the feel of it, no doubt about it. Uh, it just took a lot of shooting for me, shooting both, to finally, though, come to the conclusion that, you know, I like it okay, but I actually, maybe the hammer was too close and it, this felt better to me, you know, and, and I was shot one-handed and I just, I don't know, I just, maybe it's because of my long thumb and, and all that, but so they, they both feel good, you know. So what else about it? Uh, that's the price range. Uh, it's a five, I think five and a half inch barrel, a limited a run, and I don't know how available they are. I was surprised. I, well, I didn't know it was a limited run, actually. I just went to the Bud's website and they had one. Hey, send me one of those. I don't know if they've got, you know, 50 of them or I got their last one or, or what. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's kind of a specialized item. Maybe maybe there are quite a few of them around because they're not cheap. And uh, most people who want a Super Blackhawk maybe want a less expensive one and don't, don't you know, are not looking for a color case hardening. And so maybe they are available if, if it, you know, if it's something that appeals to you, don't know. Uh, but that is pretty, it's pretty neat. Again, with the Rugers, you know, you just open up the latch and turn the cylinder. You don't have to cock it, you know, and all that. And of course, with the Colts or Colt clones, you just cock it half cock and that's how you operate everything. Okay. Uh, and that's a seven and a half inch barrel on that one. This is five and a half. Uh, trigger's pretty nice. It's not bad. It's got just a tad bit of creep in it, but it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, that's funny, the hammer, I almost get my hand on it there if I'm not careful, uh, just the way the contour of the hammer is. Like I could almost hold it yeah, <laughs> with my hand while I pull the trigger. So for my big hands and big thumbs, I'm better off you know, with the standard uh, hammer. Okay, let's shoot the, have I even shot any of these yet? Yeah, yeah, I have. Let's shoot some of these. All right. We appreciate the help from Federal, and I tell you, we really do. It's nice having all this ammo, 45 Colt, whatever we want to shoot. All right. This might be all I shoot. And then I'll uh, see if I can think of any more lies to tell you about this firearm. We appreciate you all watching. Appreciate the folks over there on the Gong Club, on the Patreon, and uh, everybody watching our uh, shenanigans here and hopefully learning a little bit about firearms, you know. Uh, there's just so many models and so little time, right, to get to them all. So many interesting firearms being made. Some of them are not necessarily the most practical, uh, but there are still a lot of firearms being made that are just this cool. We can't let those two leaders stay, can we? We need to take them out. If I can. <laughs> All right. Takes focus. What did I tell you? All right, let's try two-handed. All right, get steady here. There we go. All right, I believe that was... No, oh, I have another round. That's okay. I, I'm going to practice my flinch here now. Let's go for the cowboy. Click. Click. And I flinched. I didn't flinch. <laughs> Guess what? If I miss, I probably flinched. That's what it's all about. Uh, let me unload it here. Again, all you do is open up the, the loading gate. It becomes an unloading gate, right? When you're unloading, it serves both purposes. So, there you go. Pretty neat. You know, uh, like I said, my, my first single action, I guess, was a big bore was a 45 colt and then i had the 44 magnum there about the same year two year period they were both rugers and i had some of the most enjoyable shooting i ever did i remember getting a pocket full of rounds and going out and just loading them in there and, and shooting them yeah they just held six rounds or five rounds safely 
but if you still have not discovered the joys of a revolver, whether it's double action or single action, I, uh, I feel sorry for you. I could almost cry for you, right? Uh, they're just a lot of fun. And uh, I, I think it's an indication person who has revolvers at all, one or two, and shoots them occasionally. It's, a, it's an indication of, a, I think, a, a true firearms enthusiast. It really is. Uh, some people are just interested in hunting, just the farm, they're just tools, whatever the farm is for hunting or for tactical situations. You know, there are people who have nothing but AR 15s and polymer pistols, you know. Uh, but most people who are really just uh, have a, a broad interest in firearms and find it fascinating the history and the mechanics of them, they're probably going to have a, a single action revolver and probably a double action revolver too, if they can afford it. They're just neat, they really are. So, I'll quit pontificating uh, and rambling. Uh, I think I gave you the basics of it. Again, uh, you may have a hard time finding it if you do love this thing. I don't know, I mean, this one will be on eGunner eventually here, but but uh, if they did just make 500, which I think they did, I mean, check me out on that and make sure. It's the, the color case hardened Bisley model and everything I read, there's 500 of them, of them made. Uh, by Doug Turnbull and you know he went through that process to get the color case hardening correct which is not easy to do not just anybody can do it Colt historically has uh, had the knack for doing that really really well and uh, but not many people seem to be able to do it correctly I think it takes time and it's expensive it's an expensive process so more expensive than just painting it on there something to look like you know color case hardening so the Bisley model, uh, so it's got some distinctive features and uh, it's one reason I wanted to, to bring it to you and let you take a look at it. It's got the Turnbull uh, uh, logo on the bottom, although it's pretty funny. Uh, I looked at it and uh, it's, <laughs> the, if you can see it, the, the Turnbull logo is a bull, kind of turned, if you can see. <laughs> so that's pretty clever, I have to say. So anyway, pretty nice firearm, uh, yeah, whether it's your cup of tea or not, it's pretty, uh, pretty interesting and it's fun to shoot and I've enjoyed, you know, trying it out and, uh, you know, again, no, no major negatives it seems to work uh, other than, you know, or express my preferences, you know, what I prefer when it comes to single action, but it's a pretty nice uh, revolver. Life is good. Hi, welcome to the end of the video. It's good to see you guys here. I want to tell you guys about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. You can find them at sdi.edu. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can become certified in gunsmithing or get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also accept GI Bill. So check them out at sdi.edu. And while you're on the internet, please also check out some of the other stuff we got going on. There's the Hickok 45 and Son YouTube channel. There's the Hickok 45 Facebook. There's the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's Hickok45 on Twitter. I've got John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram. Um, there is a John Hickok Facebook page. Uh, we have full30.com. There's our website, hickok45.com. We'll keep it simple for you. Uh, you can also find our store. We sell shirts and stuff like that on the website. Uh, there's also links on the main channel page and in the description and all that good stuff. Uh, and, and please be sure to check the descriptions in the in the videos every now and then because we'll put information in there sometimes uh, that might be useful to you. Who knows? But I appreciate you guys for watching the whole video. I hope that you enjoyed what you saw. I'm sure that you did. And if you didn't, we'll probably hear about it. But I'll see you guys later and thanks.